Hi, I'm Lowell Martin and this is MCC Today. Get ready. On today's show, we have Samantha Lay, Curtis Beckman, and Calvin Bennett. It's going to improve your IQ. Your hat size will go up three notches. Find purpose and soar to new heights at Meridian Community College. Elevate your education through our 52 career technical programs and find the eagle in you. With tuition guarantee and university transfer programs, your education is within reach. Find potential with more than 30 campus clubs and organizations and let your eagle spirit thrive. Invest in your education and register today. Meridian Community College, find your wings. Okay, and today we have Dr. Samantha Lay, who is in our Language and Literature and Success Division, uh, which is my division, so, you know, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. Glad uh, to be you've here. Been, you've been at Meridian Community College now how many years? This is my second year. Oh my, and uh, how are, how's everything going? It's great. Okay. I love it here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you know, I wanted you on the show today to talk uh, specifically about something that is actually returning to our campus. Yes. And so will you tell us a little bit about it? Yes. Um, Mr. Joshua Maeda and I are uh, bringing back the literary contest and the literary review okay. um, to celebrate literature and literary accomplishments for the students and the community in Meridian. Um, a light, airy, uh, fun title, Apocalypse. Yes, that is very, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> apocalypse. You know, just fun loving, okay. yeah, Apocalypse, <laughs> um, which actually goes back to its original title from the 70s. Right. So it's, we're bringing the old school back. Okay. And now that is our, it's going to be a, an online magazine. Right? Am I it will, it will be online, but it will also be in hard copy. Okay, okay. Yes. Because at one time it was just, I think the last uh, uh, iteration of it was just uh, online. Okay. I'm not, I might be mistaken. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'm, okay. here, so I'm throwing you under the bus here. No. Uh, but I think it was just online. And okay. uh, so it's wonderful that it's coming back both yes. as a hard copy. And uh, so what we do is we get contributions from the community and from the uh, MCC. And from the high schools. And from high schools, yes. from local high schools, yes. which is wonderful. And they can enter a contest. Right. Okay, and what are the uh, uh, divisions of the contest? You've got the um, poetry? Poetry, short story, and informal essay. Okay, so poetry, short story, and informal essay. And so we have the high school division. Yes, and then MCC and the community is together in one. We okay. hope in a couple of years, maybe even next year, to have one for MCC and then one for the community. So we'll have actually awards for three, for all three divisions. Okay, so, so when can they start contributing? Um, now, actually, but January 15th is the deadline. So they have to have contributed, they have to have submitted something. Correct. By January 15th. By January 15th. How do they go about submitting? Um, they find this literary contest flyer on campus in the library, in the um, English lab, and we can um, email them to Mr. Maeda or myself, but I think most of them are going to Mr. Maeda, just so they have one contact person. Correct. Okay. What is his email address? Do you happen to know it? I hand? don't. Okay. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, so it's Joshua Maeda. Yes. Okay. Uh, and we have to, uh, or so they have to ask him or send the information to him or Correct. send a submission to him. Correct. Okay. And then uh, by January 15th. Correct. Okay. And uh, what high schools are involved? All of the high schools in the community. All of the high schools? Every one of them. In our community. Yes. Okay. But Meridian, county. the city of Meridian and Lauderdale County. Correct. Do we include homeschooled? In this, I don't know how we would get a hold of homeschool. Okay, I was just so, wondering if, if someone heard about this and was able to. They would, yes, okay. yes, so they, they would. would it would be as as being able to contact them. I don't know how we would do that, but if they picked up one, um, then okay. absolutely, yes. Okay, because we have some du dual enrollment students. Right. Okay. Right. Now uh, we will. Lo we're looking at the uh, prizes will, that will be given. 
Yes. Okay. Uh, tell us Monetary about Monetary prizes, oh, yes. We love money. <laughs> we love money. We love money. Okay. First prize is $75, second is $50, and third is $25. Okay. So $75, $50, $25, and that's for each of the... For each in, category. For for one each for poetry, category. right? One for short story, one for the informal essay. Okay. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Lots and of opportunity. So we will also, there will also be, uh, uh, when we announce the winners, right. when will that be? Um, winners will be notified in February, and then we have an awards ceremony in April, and then in May, the publication will be available. Okay, now the awards ceremony is on campus. Correct. And what we will do is typically we invite the winners, right. first, second, third. Do we do any honorable mention at that, at that Not time? Not that I know of. Okay, so we're just doing... This is my first time sure, joining. Sure, so. <laughs> sure. So, first, uh, so we have uh, first, second, and third place winners right. will be on campus. Right. Will they uh, uh, share their work? or will they, they they will be asked to read if they wish yeah okay, of course so if they want to they can read their work right. we won't and force bring anybody their family. But, right. okay uh, and then as soon as uh, um, uh, and then they will be given their wonderful monetary gift correct at that time yes what a, okay and then the month after that the actual magazine will be out yes yeah, so because we wanted it to be really all of it to be finished by um, by the time by summer Okay, well, what, what, what do you hope this does? Reignite people's love of writing and literature. I mean, people who read, write, and write, read, and um, we need to celebrate that. And we have so few opportunities to celebrate that, especially in the high schools and in the community. And so, yeah, this gives people who have talent the option, or the opportunity, excuse me, to show that talent. I teach, uh, I'm, I'm teaching intermediate English at the moment, and you do as well. Yes. And I've had students come to me and they'll say, how can, I, how can I become a better writer? And I said, you need to write more and you need to read. Read, absolutely. And uh, I, just my heart hurt the other day because I, I asked my class, what was, you know, uh, when did you read a, a book cover to cover oh, without <laughs> it being assigned to you? And only two students raised their hands and and were able to tell me, and I was like, "Really? Okay, uh, okay." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that, and that yeah. shows in their writing actually. When when students don't read, it shows in their writing. Okay, and so their word choice we and can, grammar. We can and reignite. Them. Yes. Because you know we've got <clears throat> the essay and we've got the short story, but with short story and with uh, poetry, you can basically. You know, poetry, you can make up your own rules. Right. You know, so right. If, if Very avant-garde. Yes. Yeah. If you want to, like, you know, throw grammar and punctuation out the window. That's fine. Do so. Yes. Okay. So, hey, that would be a wonderful. We need to tell our <laughs> students, like, hey. You don't have to put you're any commas, commas anyway. <laughs> if you're mad about fragments, yeah. you need to write a poem. Yes. <laughs> you need to read. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Now, uh, have, you, have you noticed anything here on campus as far as your classes are concerned, as far as the students are concerned? As, you know, is their writing ability or uh, their uh, uh, attitude, their, you know, what, what is your impression here on this campus? The students enjoy thinking. Um, okay. When I push them for, to, to write more complicated uh, assignments, they actually, rather than be afraid of them, they actually really enjoy it. Talking mm -hmm. about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and intermediate and um, identifying needs and wants. And so the content has tended to be quite good. Um, okay. it's, it's the grammar that, that keeps getting them, which is why we have the Success Center and the Writing Center this to help true. them with that. Yeah. Well, now listen, I want you to be back on the show next semester yeah. so that we can hopefully have some of the uh, uh, winning selections yes. uh, and talk about those and maybe even show the magazine. I would Will love you that. do that? I would love that. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back. Susie, we're so excited to introduce what we'll be doing for the Lauderdale County School District Play. I am excited to be a part of it this year. And to celebrate, I've brought a special guest to help us announce it. It seems he's a little late. Do you want to build a snowman? And we have Mr. Curtis Beckman with Hello. us today. He is the IST, Information Systems Technology Program Coordinator. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, now, so the Information Systems Technology Program, you said now uh, uh, it's a two-year program? Yes. Okay. And when they finish the program, they, uh, uh, it's an, AS, a, uh, an AA degree. 
An AS degree. An AS degree, pardon me. What are the prerequisites to get into your program? Um, obviously, uh, we, we made a change okay. to the acupuncture this year. Um, it used to be a 70, now it's scored a different way. Okay. Uh, you need a 245 in reading and a 230 in algebra. Okay. Or uh, for the ACT, it's a 17 composite. Okay, so it's, uh, as long as they have a 17 composite, composite they're yes. good. And if they come here and take the acuplacer, they have to have a, you said a 245? Yes, Okay. 245. Okay, uh, so do, you, do they have to take any classes before getting no. into your program? So no, no? They, they can come straight into the program, or if they do fall short of uh, those entry requirements, they can actually come here and take English or math courses and demonstrate their capability and they can enter that way by uh, gaining a few college credit hours. Okay, so if they, if they for some reason, don't have the ACT score or the acuplacer, they just come and maybe sign up for an English class, a math class, and if they can make a B, an A yes. or B in there, then they can get into your program. Yeah, we okay. have multiple ones. It's in the catalog. I'm, I don't okay. want to misstate anything right sure. now, but I think it's uh, a B in intermediate algebra or a C or better in college. Okay, okay. Now, how many new students do you take every year? 25. 25 new students. Yes. All right. Uh, okay, and so this two-year program. And so what type of, uh, uh, what type of things do you learn? Um, we, we're made up of two programs. Okay. Uh, computer programming and computer networking. Okay. And uh, uh, the computer networking, that's more the guys that are going to be wiring the computers together to make sure they can communicate with servers and whatnot, and programmers are going to uh, write programs to accomplish specific tasks. Okay. Like if your company needed uh, a specialized financial program to operate, the programmers would have the capability to write that program. So they actually write the code yes. for the program. Yes. Okay. And so when they finish, when they complete your program, what types of jobs? Now you said they can have a computer networking job, a programming job, uh, anything else that they're... Um, well, with networking is probably the biggest because virtually every company either has networkers or they hire an outside firm to do their networking. So there's always going to be a bunch of jobs in networking. Programming is a little more specialized, but it's I'd say it's also maybe very rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, we're changing our curriculum okay. coming, coming forward. Um, it'll no longer be computer programming. Okay. It's going to be um, software coding. Uh, this is part of an initiative by C Spire, and that's going to change things up a little bit. I know C Spire is gonna hire like the top students out of the programming, uh, they're going to hire as many as they can, but they'll start out at like fifty thousand. Oh my! Yes, okay. straight out of school. So okay. we're excited about that. That's very good. Um, also, the networking is changing. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of call for cybersecurity, mm -hmm. so we're changing the networking. We didn't want to go too far along the security lines because most of our students do get jobs in networking but we want them to be well versed in security okay. so that they can do both. Okay. So what we did is we took the cybersecurity curriculum and everywhere where we had an objective uh, that we could bring in, we brought in uh, server courses okay. to make sure that our students were still well versed in networking, but they also have half a dozen cybersecurity courses okay. to get them ready to work in or assist with both. Now those new programs, we starting next fall, mm -hmm. uh, we obviously don't have numbers on that yet. Right. We're, we're going to be the first uh, college in the state that has the um, the first program, the software coding program. Okay, so we're the first to do that. Okay. Yes. And then uh, uh, you hear so much about the you know hacking and stuff like that. It's like on the news all the time. So that you know it seems like cybersecurity is something very important to go into do we yes. have any uh some other programs have the like a two plus two agreement where they can go to a university 
and uh, uh, continue their education. Uh, do we do that with any universities? Do we have any agreements with any universities? We're working on some. Okay. Okay, that's another part of that C SPIRE okay. initiative is they, they started out with coding academies that would take a, a student and put them through like so many hours of courses to get them ready for a job in programming, but they're taking it to another level. They're, they're hitting the high schools, the community college, and the universities now. Okay. Um, and we've got a deal with Ross Collins going on right now. They're going to take 15 credit hours of our courses while they're in the 10th and 11th grade. Okay, so like a dual mm -hmm. enrollment kind of yes, thing. Yes, dual okay. enrollment. And then during their senior year, they're gonna come see me for the morning hours all week. Okay. And um, they will get another 15 hours during their senior year. Now we have a one year, 30 hour certificate. So these high school graduates will already have a one year certificate when they graduate. And then if they want to continue do, can they take the the other yes. year? Yes, absolutely. And then so after so after graduating from high school, they could take one year here, and then be able to get out and possibly make fifty thousand dollars a year. Yes. Where was this when I was young? I felt <laughs> I felt the same way. I felt the same way. But we we looked at it and we saw that this was going to be a great thing for the students. So we just dove in head first. Sure. Okay, well listen, I, I wanna have you back on the show in the fall and let's see how this is going and with the you know, programming sure. and, and if, you know, if you don't mind, I, I'm just very curious because this is, uh, you hear so much about software programming and how that is one of the things that we, you know, we need people for so often yes. and yes. Uh, it looks like we're on the, on the cutting edge of that. I think so. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank Appreciate you for having it. me. We'll be right back. Meridian Community College Arts and Letters Series is proud to present a Christmas festival of nine lessons and carols. The MCC Music Department would like to welcome you to a night of sacred music and reflection, Thursday, December 5th, for the annual festival, presented by the Concert Choir and Guitar Ensemble. The lessons will be read by members of the faculty and staff with carols for the audience to sing along. The candlelight processional is a traditional part of this presentation each year. The presentation begins at 7 p.m. in the McCain Theater and admission is free. And we are back and we have Mr. Calvin Bennett, who is the Director of Residence Life and Housing here at Meridian Community That's College. Right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. You doing well today? I'm doing well. Well, are you, are you uh, 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 running herd on all the wonderful young people in our, in our residence halls? I, I said that wrong, but. Well, you said about right. Uh, <laughs> I'm gathering them up and encouraging them to go home for break and get prepared for finals, so. Young people are always so interesting, and I remember how I was when I was young, and I don't know if you were the same oh, way. Absolutely. And so you're like, mm-mm, not gonna do that. <laughs> no, no, it's I, know, I, know where, I know where this is going. It's something different. Every day, it's <laughs> nothing ever the same. So I'm always entertained. So you you can never write a like write a manual on what to do and because the situations are so different. Right. My yeah. manual started out with 50 pages. I've been back now for six years. Been at it for 19 years. It's up to 140 pages now. Okay. 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 Yeah. Whatever. So Something, by the time you finish, and by the time you're probably retire, be a bestseller. Uh, there you go. There you go. Well, um, I wanted to have you on the show to talk about housing for the spring. If anybody is interested in uh, coming here and, and, and living here, what do they need to do to uh, uh, get ready for spring semester? Um, they first need to go through and get admitted to the institution, okay. um, check with financial aid, get all that in place. As far as housing, um, our application deadlines for every semester for the spring, it's November the 15th. For the summer, it's May 15th, and for the fall, it's June 15th. Right now, if they can just get those applications and $100 deposits into our business office, we can go ahead and get them processed into spot, spots that have been vacated by graduating students or transferring students. Okay, so if you have spots available, they're gonna, you know, they must, uh, first off, they must be admitted to MCC. That's correct. They have to fill out the forms and pay the $100 fee, mm -hmm. and then uh, if we have space available, we'll place them based on a first come, first serve basis. Um, things that we look at, um, priority goes to our out of district students first, okay. um, and then we look to our local students and we place them based on receipt number and ACT score and GPAs. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, so if, you know, if 
just based on, do we have a waiting list? Do we um, right now we list? don't. We do have a waiting list in the fall. We always have a waiting list. This past fall it was up to 100. Okay. Um, so some of those students will get an opportunity to move in for the spring. But some of them unfortunately chose other institutions once they didn't get spots. But we do have some spots available right now. How many rooms do we have here at Marine um, Community College? 400, 400 slots. We have 400 rooms mm -hmm. available. We okay. have 250 in the uh, apartment complex, which is all for females, College Crossing. 42 in Thornton Hall and 96 in um, Elliott Hall. And Elliott Hall is our newest male dorm. Okay, okay. And so, uh, uh, so if they if they follow all the procedures, and uh, uh, then hopefully we will have space available in the spring for them Absolutely. to come in. Okay. Now, typically speaking, you you also you're the director of the of residence life. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Residence life. People just think housing is just where we house students. We are a whole lot more than that. We take care of our students social aspect and their educational aspects. We are learning communities. Sure. We try to match our students and provide them with the opportunity to grow beyond the classrooms, but also nurture that classroom aspect of it. Okay. Well, uh, now, uh, uh, do students typically pick their own roommates or uh, do you assign them rooms? They do have the opportunity to um, match themselves with roommates, mm -hmm. um, but those that come in not knowing anywhere, there's a questionnaire on their application and we do a little rubric with it and try to match them as best we can based on that. Um, students that are in programs, we try to put them together based on programs that they're in Smart nursing, it, okay. broadcasting, things of that nature because they tend to have the same study habits and they help each other better that way. Okay. Now, uh, I remember when I was in, in college uh, that you were, you know, if you were given a roommate and perhaps you didn't get along the best in the world, it was, it was considered, uh, you know, that it was a learning opportunity right. to make you stay, you know, in that room with them and all that. Right. Do we still do stuff like that? Can you, if you, you don't happen to get along? You have to go through mediation first with one of the dorm supervisors and see if you can work it out. Of course, we don't make anybody stay, but it is always a learning opportunity. You learn that everybody wasn't raised the same. Sure. And you learn that when you get out in the real world, how to deal with other people and different thoughts and different points of view. So, but there's always an opportunity for you to move if you can't rectify the situation. Okay, well that's a good thing. That's a good thing to know. And we also have uh, 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 people in, in each of the halls that's to great. to help out. Right. In case you know they they check on the students regularly, mm -hmm. and if anything happens, you know this this is the first right. you know person they call to. How, about how many do we have of those? I have I have three supervisors. Okay. Um, in each, in each dorm and they have resident assistants that assist them and monitor students as well. Okay. Now are the rooms, do the, do the residence assistants typically check on the rooms uh, periodically? We have spot checks every week, um, pop-up visits all the time and I walk down three or four times a day just to walk around and check on the students and see what's going on. So they never know when we'll pop up. Okay, and that's probably a good thing yeah. because we want parents to feel comfortable right. that we're taking care of their kids. Yeah, I tell them when they come in for orientation, once you drop them off, they become my kids and I take that job very seriously because I want them to know they are young adults, but they are accountable for their actions and I'm accountable for them as well. If we, if we have students that are you know, uh, from other countries or anything like that, uh, do they have to vacate the dorms? Normally not. We normally, um, normally their friends take them home with them during long breaks, but normally we don't keep them out. We make sure that we're there for them because buying tickets to go back to these countries are very expensive. So. Sure. So if we do take care of them, that means that we make sure that they're fed, we, we make, make sure, sure that they're, you know, that they, that they are are taken care That's of right. over breaks and holidays and Absolutely. things like that. So as I said before, to make to these parents to know that we real, really are taking care we of really their children. We really do take our job seriously and we want them to be productive, get out and be productive citizens and that starts with us taking care of them, mind, body and spirit. What has surprised you the most about this job? That I'm still here. <laughs> um, I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse by trade, and you people are, ask, you ask are. me all the time why am I still here. But I, I love being that mentor, and I love being able to stand up and guide them in the right directions. Because a lot of us, when we were in college, like you said, it was just a housing place, and they just. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy doing what I do. Well, thank you, Calvin. I, I always enjoy talking to you, you know, whether it be on my show or just in the hallway. We always have a good time. We do. We do. Uh, so I'm going to have you back on in the in the spring to mm -hmm. talk about summer, uh, okay. uh, possibly, and fall, getting into the uh, into housing and maybe residence life again. Okay. We'll be here. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We'll be right back.
Are you looking for better health and fitness? Meridian Community College is offering wellness and fitness classes to students and the community. Located in our Damon Fitness Center, we offer classes such as swimming, yoga, weight training, spin, Zumba, and many more. Students can also receive academic credit for enrolling. For more information, call 601-484-8763. Find your wings at Meridian Community College. Our students have been out and about videotaping all sorts of things. They're dressed like elves. Ignore them. The purpose of the mock house is to give our students an opportunity to make a home visit to investigate allegations of abuse against the children that live in this home. Today, I had the honor of speaking with Mrs. Kim Coward. She explained that the purpose of the mock house class is to show what real children growing up in abused homes have to live with. These kids are exposed to high-end drugs, a dirty environment, and statistics show that some are even abused when growing up in such a home. My heart goes out to any children dealing with this way of living, as shown in the video, because they're helpless and innocent and don't have the means to escape these lives on their own. We incorporate this into the second simulation of the course. Anyone interested in social work or just interested in understanding this whole concept, I really encourage you to sign up for this class. Go give Mrs. Kim Coward a visit. And this is Calvin on MCC Today. The Eagle Experience is an educational event bringing many high school students to our campus in hopes that they will choose MCC to continue their college career. The future college students went on a tour, had a complimentary lunch, and played Minute to Win It inspired games all while learning about their college experience in an extremely fun way. I think they wanted to get us involved in what we were doing. It was, I thought it was really fun. It helped me to wake up. Um, I guess it was just to like get us loose and to kind of encourage us to go here because the people here are really great and I was just getting us exposed to them. I am thinking about going here actually. Um, I've lived here all my life and like I, all my friends go here and I just think it's a great opportunity too. The event was hosted by the Director of Recruiting and organized by MCC recruiter Ashley Tanksley who told us more about the event. Ultimately, we're hoping that they make MCC their decision um, to further their education. Um, we know it can be tough at this point of time with the four years and the other community colleges around us, um, but we have something special here at MCC. Our programs, the instructors, the staff, I mean, everybody's special, and we're hoping that we can allow them to see that today, and then they'll enroll here at Marinity Community College. For MCC Today, I'm John Moore. My favorite Thanksgiving food is turkey because it tastes good and like you can do so much stuff with turkey. You can stuff it. You can like make turkey bacon. My favorite part is like the turkey leg because like, you can just eat it like that. Man. It's, it's really good. My favorite Thanksgiving food is pumpkin pie. <laughs> My favorite Thanksgiving food is sweet potato casserole. My favorite uh, Thanksgiving food is uh, Jerusalem. This is Philip Moore with MCC Today. Thank you for watching today's show. On behalf of Matt Milner, our executive producer, Josh Taylor, our media consultant, and Jabrisha Rush, our student producer, uh, we're glad you were here. We hope you learned a little bit.